So before getting into deployment, let me just create a dummy React app over here just so you can understand the complete end-to-end -end process. So I've opened VS Code over here and I'll go to my terminal and say npm create wheat at latest. Now what this will do is it will initialize a dummy React app right over here. I'll just press dot over here so that it creates the project right in this folder and press enter for this package name. I'll select React and JavaScript. And you can see it has initialized a new React app over here. I'm gonna get rid of all the things that we don't need like this assets folder, everything inside of app.css, everything inside of index.css. And inside of app.jsx, I will remove all of these things. I'll remove this state. And instead of this JSX, I'll have a div over here which will say, subscribe to roadside coder which you should if you haven't yet. So let's just go on and run this app. Before that, we need to install the dependencies as well. So I'll say npm install, and it will install the dependencies inside of this package.json file, which are these right over here. Okay, there we go. All of our dependencies have been installed. Now I'll say npm run dev and run this app real quick. There it is. We can see subscribe to roadside coder over here. Great. Now, some of you might be using .env in your files as well. So let's just create a .env file. Inside of this, let's just take a environment variable called wheat underscore example. And I'll just give the value as Piyush. Now, if you don't know what environment variables are, these are basically the values which we don't want to show the user, right? So that's why we keep them in a separate file, which is going to be hidden when we push it to our GitHub. So if I go now to our app.jsx, I'll just say, name equals and I'll just import my environment variable. So inside of curly braces, I'll say import dot meta dot env dot wheat underscore example. Let's save it and see. Okay, we can see name equals fuse. Let's just keep it in a separate tag like this. Great. Now let's go on and push this code to our GitHub account so that we can deploy it first on Netlify. Right, so I'll go to github.com there we go. If you don't have an account, you can create an account over here. Click on this new button and create a new repository. So I'll just say deploy react app tutorial and I'll click on create repository. There we go. And now you're going to see we have some steps over here. First of all, we have to initialize a new empty GitHub repository. So I'll just scale the server over here and type git in it. And you can see it has initialized empty git repository over here. Now, next thing we're supposed to add all of these files that are supposed to be deployed, right? So we don't want to send this .env file, right? So what we will do, we will uh, go inside this .git ignore file. It will ignore all of the files that are mentioned over here. Like we don't want to send node modules and .env, right? So we can see node modules is already here. Let's just go on and add .env over here as well. And now you will see it won't consider the dot env for the changes over here, right? So now I can say git add dot. It will stage all of these files for uh, pushing it to GitHub. And now I'll say git commit and give it a message dash m. Let's say final code. It has been committed. And now you can see it will just ask us to push it to the main branch or the master branch. But before that, we have to add the origin for our git repository. So just copy this, paste it over here, git remote add origin. It will add, like connect your VS code with the uh, this particular GitHub repository. And now simply just say git push origin master. And it will push the code into the master branch, just like this. Now if I go back and refresh this, you can see all of our code is right over here. Great. Now what I'll do, I'll go to netlify.com. And this is the first way where we will be deploying our react app. So let's click on deploy to Netlify. It will ask us to create a new account. Let's just sign up with GitHub. All right, there we go. I have logged in successfully. And you can see I have deployed few apps in the past over here as well. All right, let's click on add new site and import an existing project. Now it's going to give you all of these options over here. We're supposed to choose GitHub because that is where our repository is. Now it will connect your Netlify account with GitHub account. So click on authorize Netlify and we have successfully connected our GitHub account. And now over here, you'll start to see all of your GitHub repositories. And our GitHub repository was deploy React app, right? So let's see 
Yep, there it is. Let's click on this. It's gonna ask us the site name. Let's just say top ways to deploy. You can like probably choose some shorter name and it will create this URL top ways to deploy dot netlify dot app. Let's click on check availability. It's available. Okay. Let's scroll down. We're supposed to choose the master branch. That's fine. The build command is npm run build. If I go back, you can see in the package.json, there's this build script over here, right? Which will build our app. So npm run build, and you don't have to touch all of these things. We're supposed to add the environment variables over here. So this is where you will be adding add environment variables. We will be adding the name of our variable, which is this wheat underscore example. And the name is Piyush. You can put whatever over here and it's gonna display it inside of your app.jsx over here. Right, cool. Let's click on deploy. Deploy it, obviously deploy, right? It's a weird name, but okay. It has started the process. Let's see what happens next. You can see it's starting up. If there's any error, it's gonna show up right over here. And like if it's like if your uh, website fails while deploying, you can just click on over here and you can see the logs and the reason for the failure of the deployment. So let's wait. And there we go. It has successfully published our website. So let's click on this link over here and you're going to see our website is finally deployed to this URL over here. Now you can share it with whomever you want. Also, since this website has been deployed through your GitHub repository, if you happen to make any change in your code and then you push it to GitHub, it will automatically run the whole deployment process again and deploy your website and reflect those changes right over here. Right? So it's super convenient. Okay. So now some of you might be thinking this has this dot netlify dot app over here in the URL, right? What if I want this dot com or whatever my name of the website is dot com, right? That is setting a custom domain. So you can click on this domain management over here and click on add domain. Now here you can add your own custom domain. If you have purchased any domain, like for example, roadside coded.in, right? So let's say if you don't have any domain right now, right? So how will you purchase a domain or from what is the best place from where you can get a domain right now? And that is where Hostinger comes into the picture. So click the first link in the description down below and you will land on this page right here. And you know, Hostinger is the only brand in India to provide affordable hosting with great features like free domain, email, unlimited SSL, etc. And the best part is that they have a new data center in Mumbai now so that we can get great speed and uptime. So let me just click on this claim deal because this is the best plan that's been going on for Hostinger and click on add to cart. And you're going to be routed to this page where you can choose your plan. I would recommend if you're just getting started, you can either go for 12 month plan or 24 month plan. But if your pocket allows, definitely you can go for 48 month plan because this is the most affordable plan out there with just 149 rupees per month. So let me just choose at least 12 months plan over here to get a maximum discount, which we can see is 63%. And not just this, I've got you guys sorted with my own discount coupon. So if you click on over here, have a coupon code and just enter roadside coder and click on apply. Boom you get additional discount over here, additional 10% discount. And now you guys can quickly come on over here and fill your details and just click on submit secure payment to get your premium web hosting plan. All right, so we are inside of our dashboard now and let's quickly claim our domain. So I'm gonna enter roadsidecoder.in and you can see we have a bunch of different domains over here to choose from. So let's click on check availability and yep, our domain is available. Let's claim the domain. Let's just uh, complete the registration by entering that this is my personal domain. Let's enter my details. And after you're done, just click on finish registration and it's gonna show you the summary of your details. Click on this checkbox and complete registration. There we go, our domain has been secured. We can just skip over here and here it is. Here's the dashboard for our domain. Um, now this might take some time like 10 to 20 minutes to you know get your domain secured for Hostinger. So meanwhile, let's go on and set up our premium web hosting. And it's gonna ask me a few questions. So let's just give me this for me. I want to create a website. What do you want to create a website with? You can also choose Hostinger's website builder if you want. So I'm gonna skip that for now. And I'll choose my roadsidecoder.in domain. Let's select my country, which is already selected India. And now it's gonna be initializing our website for us. And there you go, we're done with it. 
and you can see over here it's gonna show us that our domain is being connected it might just take around 12 minutes a few moments later and great our domain is connected you can see our website is running smoothly they also have a 30 days money back guarantee and a great 24 7 customer support in case you get stuck anywhere in this process all right so now that we are inside this dashboard we don't even need netlify because hostinger provides the hosting services right out of the box let me show you so we have this roadside coder dot in domain registered let's deploy our website on this uh, top ways to deploy but instead of netlify we can say roadsidecoder.com or if you want you can directly deploy your website on roadsidecoder.in as well but let's just for this video i'll just uh, create a subdomain so just click on this websites over here and you can see i've deployed a few websites in the past including this streamer.in i've created a complete tutorial on how you can build this react app and deploy it on hostinger it's super easy right let's just go on to our roadsidecoder.in domain let's click on this dashboard and click on domains and click on subdomains. So I'll create a new subdomain over here. Let's say deploy dot roadside coder dot in. Okay. And now I can click on create over here and it will create this deploy dot roadside coder dot in URL for us. But if you want to deploy our website onto this, let's just go back and go to file manager inside of the file manager inside of public HTML. Here you can see we have this deploy folder over here. And this is where we are supposed to keep our website. So let me show you how you can do that. So if I go back to our React app over here, what I'll do, I'll build this app. So I'll say npm run build. And you can see it has started the build process and it has created the build folder right over here. That's all. Let's just open this folder, reveal in file explorer. Yep. And we want to keep everything inside of over here, here in this deploy folder. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll click on upload folder and I've opened the deploy react app uh, folder and click on this dist and upload. Click on upload over here and you can see it has started uploading all of those files. Now what I'll do, I'll go inside this dist folder and copy all of these files like just move these files. Where is it? Yeah, move file and we will move them back to this deploy folder over here. Move. Right? We don't want to keep it inside this disk. So let's just delete it. Delete. We don't need this default public, uh, like default.php over here as well. Right? Great. And that is it. That is all you had to do to deploy this app. Let's go to deploy.roadsidecoder.in. And there we go. Our website is live. Amazing. All right, now the third and the final way of deploying our React and probably one of the most popular ways is using Vercel. Let's click on start deploying and again over here as well, we're supposed to continue with GitHub or GitLab, whatever, wherever you put your code, right? So I'm going to click on continue with GitHub. Let's give the authorization to our cell. There we go. Now we're supposed to import our GitHub repository. So let's click on add GitHub account. And if you want, you can import all of your repositories or only selected repository. Let's just import all of our repositories. Okay, great. Let's click on this folder deploy react app tutorial because this is what we want to deploy import. Now we're supposed to give the project name. I'll just keep it this itself. Our framework is wheat. It has auto detected this. We want to keep any environment variables. Yes, we do. Let's take our environment variables. So wheat underscore Piyush and name Piyush over here. Click on add. Okay, let's click on deploy now and see what happens. Okay, it has queued the deployment and we can see the build log over here as well. If we, you know, if you encounter some errors, you're going to see it right over here. Okay, it is building for production. All right. And the deployment is successfully completed. Amazing. Let's continue to the dashboard and it has given us this domain right over here. If I click on it, there we go. Our website is deployed on Vercel. And again, if you want to add a custom domain over here in Vercel as well, you can follow the same process that I showed you earlier and just click on these domains over here and you can probably click on edit and change the domain. Instead of Vercel.app, you can, you know, add a custom domain like roadsidecoder.in, right? But for that, you'll obviously have to purchase a domain and if you're preparing for front-end interviews definitely go and check out my complete front-end interview preparation course this is the only thing that you will ever need to prepare for your front-end interviews and not only this i've covered every single topic of react js like react router dom redux all of the hooks class-based component function-based component react 
even the performance optimization, which is asked from senior developers a lot, tons of machine coding questions as well, and obviously in-depth interview preparation course on JavaScript as well. So all of this you get in one single course. So click the link in description down below because right now we're having the biggest sale of the year for a very limited time. So don't forget to check it out. Or you can also scan this QR code on your screen to go directly to the course page.